What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got the best Eruptor loadout for facing off with the Automatons. Now there's more than a few things that we need to cover, so let's get straight into it. Starting off talking about the most overpowered weapon facing off with every other primary inside of Helldivers 2 right now, the Eruptor. In no way, shape, or form could this weapon be completely overhyped because it can destroy fabricators from a distance as well as bug holes and at the same time has the capability of sometimes one-shotting some of those enemies you may be facing off with, even the media type enemies. There it could be in no way shape or form some type of placebo effect making you believe that this weapon is outstanding against every other weapon. Because there's no doubt in my mind when it comes to the explosive shrapnel of this weapon it is going to be bursting with DPS in every single direction creating a crowd control machine like no other. For full disclosure from Reaper Incorporated, this weapon is absolutely not a full-on crowd control machine. It just can sometimes crowd control a little bit well. I've never seen a horizon get cleared so quickly in my life. Welcome to what the Eruptor can do for you when facing off with the Automatons. First things first, when it comes to facing off with those humanoid bots, you might as well consider them blown to bits already. Because as soon as this thing impacts, it's going to be destroying everybody, sometimes completely overpowered. We're talking about massive crowd controls when it hits with the shrapnel. An absolute devastation when it comes to facing off with humanoid bots because it can one-shot them. Super overpowered. Now let's talk about those devastators and how you can one-shot them if you hit them directly in their weak spot on their face. And at the same time, sometimes shooting them in the crotch will be able to one-shot them if the shrapnel seems to land into their leg or their chest at the same time as impact. Overpowered, I'm telling you. Just like everybody else is over high, I mean over telling you that it's overpowered. This is a god tier weapon. But beyond that, for full disclosure from Reaper Incorporated, it will also take about two to three shots from not hitting the weak spot slash crotch area of Devastators in order to take them down. By God, it's overpowered. And when it comes down to taking down hulks, I mean it's the most frustrating, I mean overpowered thing you can possibly imagine. It's gonna take exactly three shots to the weak spot in order to take down any one of those hulks. You've never seen a hulk fall to his knees faster than this. By the time it passes 24 hours, you'll finally get that third round directly into that back weak spot, and that hulk is falling down straight onto his face. For full disclosure from Reaper Incorporated, it will take quite a while before this hulk finally Drops onto his face and dies. Overpowered. And I'm telling you right now, if that hulks somewhere near some type of rock structure or hits next to a wall, or possibly you have the high ground on that and you're able to shoot that eruptor right behind him, you'll be able to take him down in just about four to eight shots by just bouncing the shrapnel into his back weak spot. For full disclosure from Reaper Incorporated, taking down a hulk in this manner is not efficient and more than likely may take well more than eight rounds and be extremely difficult to actually Pull off. And if you thought it wasn't overpowered enough, let's talk about the heavily armored tanks. If you find yourself facing off with any one of those heavily armored tanks and then you just get up right into that back end of them and start shooting underneath that tank within three shots, you will be able to blow up that heavily armored tank quite easily. Quite seriously. It's, it's a little bit strong in this aspect, I won't lie. This is one of those moments where I'll cut down a little bit of the satire. It will be able to get all of that shrapnel up underneath the back end of that tank and in the exhaust position and be able to destroy it with just three shots just about nine times out of ten. You won't have to hit the back weak spot of that cannon top turret. Super overpowered. But wait, there's more. You may find yourself in a situation where there's some flying enemy types going around and it's going to be extremely frustrating, I mean overpowered, versus those engines of those flying enemies. It'll only take three shots to any one of those engines to bring down one of those flying enemy types. And there's no way, shape, or form that it could even be hard to hit some of those engines at any given time as it bounces left to right and flies in weird rotating patterns. But for full disclosure purposes from Reaper Incorporated, we will also need to state that more than likely you would be better off utilizing some type of support weapon if not your team to get this done but at the same time both options could be quite frustrating to deal with so sometimes you may just want to ensure that you're coming in with your own proper support weapon during these times to take down each one of these flying type enemies. It's just unbelievable. And last but not least, the most overpowered aspect of this weapon, when it comes down to facing off with the meat saws, all you gotta do is aim for the gut on those things. That stomach weak spot's gonna get blown to bits in just one 
shot. I mean, how could it not be overpowered if it's taken out the meat sauce in just one shot? But for full disclosure purposes from Reaper Incorporated, be sure to not shoot them too close to yourself as if you are caught in the blast radius of this weapon for whatever reason Arrowhead has designed an improper explosion to where it turns into an implosion and somehow Vortex sucks you closer to the meat saw and sometimes completely saws you to death very easily. So do be careful. Super overpowered. The Eruptor, a devastating force. One of the best primaries you can use in Helldivers 2 right now. But that's enough talking about the most overpowered weapon inside of the game right now when it comes to the primaries. Let's talk about the weak stratagems that'll accompany this overpowered weapon. As everything will just be complementing that of the overpowered Eruptor. For full disclosure purposes from Reaper Incorporated, the stratagems will 100% be helping and compensating for the weak aspects of the Eruptor and some of its overpowered aspects. Starting off first though, taking a break from our satire, we have the Eagle Air Strike, which is going to be one of those most powerful stratagems that you can possibly use that just got even better with the ship module that we just had available for the Eagles. If you've gotten that upgrade for the XXL hangar bay, this is now something that is even more reliably one-shotting a lot of those hulks out there. This thing is just absolutely dominating every other stratagem yet again, giving you the capability of completely board clearing when it comes to facing off with any of those bot drops. It's also one-shotting any one of those heavily armored tanks, giving the capability of destroying those fabricators, having multiple uses with a really low cooldown regardless of whether or not we have modifiers increasing this. Overall, at this point, any loadout that you have when it comes to facing off with the automatons almost feels mandatory to at least have Eagle Airstrike within it. I wish we had something that could equal the output of power of the Eagle Airstrike when it came to the orbitals, especially when it comes down to the overall cooldown and uses we have available to it. Considering it does get a bit stale that we're basically stuck with almost the same rotation of stratagems when facing off with the automatons as compared to the Terminid. It feels a lot more restricting and it feels like there's a lot less options available that are going to be extremely useful when facing off with the automatons. Coming up right after that, we've got the Orbital Rail Cannon Strike, which is just going to be all about being able to take out those hulks, those heavily armored tanks and cannon turrets as quickly as possible so we can get back to sniping with the Eruptor. Right after that, we've got the EMS Mortar Sentry, which is all about just slowing down those enemies, if not stopping them in their place, especially when it comes down to a bot drop. As soon as you see that flare pop up, just turn around and find a location to drop down that EMS Mortar. That way, as soon as those bot ships come in and start dropping those enemies, that EMS is already starting to fire over and getting every one of those enemies enemies stopped in their place, making them easy targets for you and your teammates, and it just makes the most usefulness out of that explosive radius from the shrapnels, considering all those enemies will be tightly packed together right after they drop off and make it a bit easier to destroy them as quickly as possible with something like the Eruptor. As a lot of times, like, the biggest aspect of the Eruptor is just simply being able to utilize that shrapnel to really take out larger amounts of those enemies, and that is the number one thing, basically putting it in line with the other weapons that we have available to us when it comes to the other primaries. But don't doubt that it's still super overpowered. And coming up in our fourth stratagem slot, it's going to be all about a support weapon to help compensate for the lackluster capabilities of dealing with any enemies up close and personal and the slow rate of fire that it has when you do have a group of devastators bearing down on top of you. When it comes to having a Hulk or a group of devastators getting too close to you, switching to the Redeemer is just not going to be a viable option, so we'll have to use some type of support weapon to help us in those moments. And one of the number one choices that I found was actually the Arc Thrower, considering it did get a buff recently, even though, you know, a bunch of people would probably be down in the comments again, being a cry baby talking about oh it oh it got nerfed and it just doesn't fire as fast as it used to just go ahead and cry down in the comments about it and i don't care it definitely got a buff because now i am whipping every one of these bots into submission this thing is definitely overpowered this thing is pushing these hulks down it's pushing the devastators down and it's giving you the capability of hitting hulks and devastators at the same time stun locking them stopping them from dealing dps and being able to take them down fairly quickly the only thing that's going to take a good while to arc into and destroy is going to be the hulk and that's only if you're not getting the proper RNG. Sometimes it will go through the middle faceplate and be able to destroy them fairly quickly, but a lot of times it's going to be even stronger when it comes to facing off with the Devastators than the Hulks, but the whole purpose is to be able to stun lock them, stop them from killing you, 
and being able to take them out in the same process. If not, stun locking them to the point where your teammates are able to get behind, hit that weak spot, and make it a whole lot faster. And at the same time, it can stun lock multiple hulks, considering it does arc between the enemies, and if they're close together, you can get two of them and just keep whipping them until they're down. I couldn't believe it, I loved that moment. And there's now a ship module that further increases the number of enemies arced through by one, and this can be very noticeable and very powerful. But the one downside to utilizing the arc thrower with a build like this is it does end up relying on the eruptor in order to take out those flying type enemies or relying on those teammates, which can still be a frustrating moment. So if you do want to still have the capability of taking down those flying type enemies without having to utilize the eruptor, which can be extremely frustrating, I mean super overpowered. You can use alternative options like the laser cannon or something like the auto cannon, especially since we're not utilizing a backpack with this build. Both of these weapons are extremely viable options alongside that of the arc thrower when it comes to being a support weapon that can compensate the eruptor. Now, when it comes down to some alternative stratagems that you may want to use, say you're not a big fan of the EMS mortar, shield generator pack is great for survivability and stopping some of those lasers from staggering you while you're trying to line up those shots with the eruptor. That can be a, a quality of life difference right there. And possibly throwing in the orbital laser over the EMS sentry, if not replacing the orbital rail cannon with orbital laser, as orbital laser is just going to be great for that crowd control, destroying some of those bases and just giving you something that you can just pop out there and then just let it go free reign and destroying some of those targets in front of you. You really can't go wrong with it. But that's going to be the loadout right there, people. That's going to be the super overpowered eruptor loadout. That's going to be one that... More than likely, you'll enjoy. This is definitely a good time. The Eruptor isn't the most overpowered weapon in the game. I just got a little bit bored with trying to talk about this weapon and key highlight some of its strengths as it's it's definitely not the most overpowered weapon in the game. I feel a lot of people are overhyping this thing. It's fun. It's strong. It does have some capabilities to it. But overall, I believe a lot of people are having a placebo effect at seeing some of these enemies get one shot by it. And thinking to themselves, that's what makes it overpowered, or just getting that feeling from it that they haven't been able to get from some of the other primaries. It's definitely something that's fun, it's fresh, it's completely different from what we've basically been playing around with for the first two months, which is shotguns and some single-fire explosive weapons. And finally, we've got a primary that not only feels like a support weapon, but it also has some punch to it. But don't get caught up in that moment where you overlook the negative aspects to this weapon. It's one of those that I very similarly look at compared to the anti-material rifle where it's all about the wielder of this weapon that makes it the most powerful. It's definitely a niche type of category for some players and within the wrong hands this is something that can be extremely detrimental to the team if not just the wielder themselves. But at that same time it can still be a good time and it still can be powerful even if you're somebody that's just about average doesn't exactly have the greatest aim you can still get things done with this it's just not going to be as powerful as some people are hyping it up to be. But let me know down in the comments below how you're feeling about the weapon. I'd, I'd love to hear about some of the stratagem combinations you've been putting together to compensate to some of those downsides to the Eruptor itself, but let me know down in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, hit that subscribe button, and if you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. We'll be streaming daily. And on that note, have a good one.